Hey, what's up everybody? That's a terrible in intro. Minnesota rock band Remo Drive just released two new singles from their upcoming album, Natural Everyday Degradation. Their first album released in 2017 and it was called Greatest Hits and it had very positive reviews. We get a little taste of their next album from these two newly released singles, Two Bucks and The Grind. I always look like I'm bald in these videos. You're going bald. So these two singles definitely show the more alternative rock side of their sound with the jangly electric guitars mixed with the uh, reverby clean guitars. It's certainly not a wild departure from their earlier material, but it's definitely a little different. Mainly I'd say production wise, but they've also slightly evolved their sound. The new production style definitely complements different things and aspects of the songs. I'd say the old production is a lot more gritty and kind of makes the music sound more hashed together. But on these two new singles, they definitely sound more crisp and defined, which I think is a sound that some people appreciate more and others don't. Yeah, I certainly wouldn't say this cleaner production is a I, I mumble. Certainly wouldn't say that this new production is necessarily a bad thing in any regard, it's just different. So if you're really a fan of that gritty, punkier thing, you might not like it. But if you're a fan of cleaner, more well-produced music, you're actually gonna probably prefer this. The new production style, to me, also makes the drums sound a lot nicer. And I definitely feel like they're incorporated better into the track than previously. But that all being said, it might be a little bit overdone compared to their last project. Both singles, oh, both of the songs are very similar in terms of overall sound and instrumentation. The genre influences I'm getting off of these tracks are more like alternative rock, punk rock, and some emo mixed in there. And calls to bands like Vampire Weekend and Sunny Day Real Estate. Now there have been some complaints that their music is a little basic and not terribly creative, but I certainly wouldn't say that this style is overdone or tired out. I think there's still a lot of directions and areas that you can go in with this genre to experiment and just add to it. And even though there's nothing terribly creative here in terms of the style and the songwriting and all that, I still think that they have their own thing going. They're complementing the genre well, and I just think it's a welcome to rock. F you. Whatever. In terms of arrangement, I think these songs are done really well. They're not too cookie cutter and formulaic, but they're also not messy and jumbled and confusing. You do have some cliches like the build up drum intro or the breakdowns, but it's not so verse chorus verse chorus that's just a snooze fest boring song you can sleep to. At times some people might be a little put off by the lead vocals, as he tends to fall into that punk trope of really whiny, but generally speaking they're quite enjoyable. Yeah, like I, I feel like ever since Tom DeLonge got popular with Blink-182 you have a lot of vocals or vocalists that have this kind of whiny thing, and uh, oftentimes it does work and it sounds good and it really brings the emotions through, and then other times it comes across really painfully annoying, mm. but I think this this time it actually works quite well. It's not, it doesn't sound like, like, like some really bad pop punk band from like 2002. Yeah, totally agree. What? It smells like shit. To be honest, I'd love to talk about Two Bucks more, but I honestly just don't have much to say about that song. It's a solid, well-structured rock track that is fairly enjoyable to listen to, but it's not a song that I feel like I could talk for very long about, as it's not that memorable. I feel like Two Bucks has a better introduction song to this album, and it's certainly more radio-friendly and would have a more broad appeal, but I feel like when it comes to musicality and a song that I actually feel excited about, it's definitely The Grind. Like, I really, really enjoyed that song. Yeah. Not that I didn't enjoy the other song, I'm just really excited about The Grind. Yeah, I really like that track too. I love the build-up at the beginning, it's certainly been done a million times where a song's opened up with drums building up to a big epic kind of chorus explosion, but the effects certainly worked really well here. It makes you excited and hyped up for what's coming. Okay, I, 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 I have something to say about that. Yeah, it totally made me feel happy and upbeat. I think it was a good use of harmonies and instrumentation to really build that up and get you to a certain point in the song. It's weird. It almost, it, it's like, it sounds sad but happy at the same time. Yeah, it's exactly. Like, it's either a bad thing happening that's in the goodness or a good <laughs> bad thing. And I've really got to applaud those melodies during the verse. I just think they're really well crafted and they're, they bring out a lot of emotion. I can really feel what the singer is talking about. I can feel his sadness. I can feel it in my plums. There isn't as much variety in the drums and guitar in this track as we know that they're capable of. But even with that, it's still a really, really nice track. But it's almost like this track doesn't even need that. Because it's not that complicated, but it works really, really well. They've turned out something really good from the simplicity. Yeah, and when it comes down to the essence of what punk rock was about in the first place, it was simplicity, mm -hmm. basic writing, basic chords, nothing overly complicated. And I think they do this that really yeah. well in this song. I just like how it sounds like a band kind of playing in a garage. Yeah. But one that doesn't fucking suck. And I also love the solo during the grind too. It just, it, it pulls off exactly what I think a guitar solo sh should be and perfectly encompasses the way the song is supposed to have you feel and the way the lyrics are too. Sometimes you can, you just, you just feel it. You can't describe it. You just feel it in your soul and your blood and your guts. And you just barf everywhere because you can't contain the feeling. <laughs> you know. The lyrics are very raw too. You know, it's about something that a lot of artists talk about, but it's something that is a tried and true way to just get your feelings out onto the page. It's about a relationship, 
It's about not feeling like you can hack it anymore. There's a lot of resentment in that relationship. It's building up and he just feels like the end is coming and it's about to crash down. And those types of lyrics really fit well into how this song is, with a lot of build-ups and crashes. Edit that to make it sound kind of good, I don't know. For ratings, I'm going to give two bucks a 70, and I'm going to give my favorite of the two, The Grind, a 78. I'm going to give two bucks a 69, and I'm going to give The Grind a 76. We're curious to hear what you guys think, so please start a conversation in the comments. Let us know what you thought of this song, if you're excited about this album, if you think it's a piece of shit and you're really f***ing pissed off about how awful it is, which we don't think, but you may. So let us know. Check out our other reviews if you enjoyed this one, and we'll see you next time. Do something weird. This is Stephen talking. Please subscribe to no your responsibilities right now, dammit.